to really think it was Professor McGonna Wannabe, because we're all a gonna wanna be something. But you can call me Professor McG, Professor M, uh, whichever. Totally easy. This is our inaugural show. And as the guest, I would like to welcome Kathy Brodsky. She's an author, but and along with that, she has also helped a lot of people through change and through tough times. And part of her stories are about that. So welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor M. I am so excited <laughs> to be here at your very first show. I feel very, very honored. And thank you for having me. Well, great. Great. So you're an author. You wrote a story called The Inside Story. And... Um, I thought I'd just read, for everyone who has endured difficult times and grown stronger as a result, this is for you. What, what prompted you to, to write this story? Well, you see, in my work, I see a lot of people who are going through tough times. And sometimes there's, there's a plus after the tough times, but we don't know it when we're going through the tough times. And so w w this story came about, I was at somebody's house on a snowy February day, and you all know how it can be in February in New Hampshire. And this person needed some envelopes mailed, and I said, I'll mail them for you. And she said to me, they'll be very happy. Now, she didn't remember that sentence, but I did. And four nights later at midnight, the inside story was born. Oh, and the inside story, what happens in the inside story? Right well, now? the inside, as you can see from the cover, can you oh see yes. that? Yes, from the cover, the which cover. we're holding up the cover. Okay. <laughs> there we go, there's the cover. There we go. Yay, we got the cover, hooray. Yes, yes well, yes, remember, yes. <laughs> we don't have to be perfect. No, today. no, this is, this is weird thinking. I know, and we're so, trying something yes, new. Yes, we're trying something new. <laughs> so, so it's a story about a little envelope that goes through the mail system and it's been sitting, you know, if you were an envelope or an envelope, whatever people want to call it, you right. know, if you, if you were an envelope and you had been only in your box for many, many, many years, because these boxes sit on shelves forever. I mean, mm -hmm. people go to the store and they buy a box of envelopes and they just sit and sit and sit and sit. And how fun is that? That's not fun. <laughs> so this poor little guy has been sitting in his box his whole life. And one day, and he sleeps a lot. And one day, somebody pulls him out. He hopes it's, they're going to play with him, but they stuff him. They <laughs> write on him. <laughs> they stamp him, and they send him away. The guy has no idea. Oh, man. And he's no, never no, left home. And he didn't get to pick either. Did no, he? he didn't get to pick. Like, he didn't get to this. pick. He didn't get to choose. And he was sent away to a scary place because... That was not his home. Mm -hmm. It was a mailbox. He had never been there before. And so there's a, there's a little line in there. It says, it's hard to see. It's scary here. So many shapes and sizes. I don't dare say a word. They may be in disguises. Because he doesn't know about any other people other than well, right, his fellow envelopes. Yes. All, I mean, it's just like I had a cousin who moved to Europe on the first day. Um, and she had kids on the first day. They didn't dare to go out of the hotel. Yes. Right? Because, oh my gosh. What? And the same thing when I yeah. went. You know, the first time. Yeah. The first time you do something, it's like, this is going to be very scary. That's right. And sometimes, oh, wait. I you can know, do this. I, I can do this. You go out of the hotel for a little bit, and That's then you right. come back. That's and right. You go out. That's right. And you come back. Yes, yes. And, and you try out the money, and the money is different, and they're yeah. talking a foreign language that you've never heard before. But then you listen, and you hear, oh, yes, when people say that, they do something. So then you pay attention, and that's how we learn things. We learn a lot from imitating other people. Right, you know, right. and watching. Imitating and watching. When we're little kids, we look at our parents because they supposedly know what they're doing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how, we, that's how we grow. We learn, you know, mom does it like this, and dad does it like this, and my teacher does it like this. Yeah. So that's how we learn how to do stuff. Yeah, and your story is kind of, it's one of those where it's an envelope, right? It's not a person. It's no, a, it's, no. You can relate, but it doesn't, it's not a person.
person, and so therefore it's not quite as scary. That's yeah. right. That's right. Or it's and not personal. There's not. It's yeah. Personal. No. And I think sometimes in our writing, we can we can show with our writing. We can show so many different things with our writing because you know what's really important too. Because this is now I'm thinking about reading, and reading. Oh. You know, years ago I went to a, a program, uh, a national program, and the woman presenting said. Read, 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 read. She couldn't emphasize the word read more. And she said, when you're young, because then the story is stored in the imagination. And then when you need some little creativity, there it is. There it is. Or, or a strategy, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't this a little bit about a strategy? Yes, I yes. Mean, just from the experience you've had over the years of helping people through tough times or making change or those sorts of things, having a strategy when you're younger or learning strategies, all the traditional stories we had, plus all the new stories yeah. we get to add. Yeah. And um, I think it's really tough sometimes when you have change, right? And yep. especially for kids. Is this for something kids. You said sometime when a mother used this one time? Yes, it was so exciting. Um, one of my clients had a um, – the family was splitting up, which was un unfortunate. But the five-year-old daughter, the mother read the book to her five-year-old daughter, and the little girl said um, – Mommy, the envelope is scared like I'm scared. So she was able to, to you know, really talk about her feelings because the envelope was scared. But, but in this story, my stories always have happy endings, I have to tell you, which is very nice. <laughs> I like happy endings. The American way. Yes. And so what makes the story nice, too, it does have a happy ending. And the envelope or envelope ends up in a much better position than it was at the beginning. But while it's going through the change, it doesn't realize that. And that's something about change, too. Sometimes we go through a very tough time, but there's a plus at the end. There's a gain at the end. And while we're going through it, we don't realize that. Yeah, until we look back and go, oh, wow, that's I could do that. Yeah. Right? And, and that's all a part of learning, right? I tutor a lot of kids, and especially math, that uh, the intimidation factor oh is yeah. the biggest issue. Right? The, yeah. the intimidation or the fear factor or the fear of the unknown, right? Fear of the unknown is huge. Whenever, if just think if, if when somebody, you get directions, of course now with GPS it's a little different, but before GPSs were around. Assuming if you, GPS is totally correct. Yes, we don't know. Sometimes they can <laughs> end you up in I'm not the right there. place, yeah. a dead end or something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I, it happened to me. That happened to me. One time we almost ended up in the water. If we had kept going, we would have ended up right in the ocean. Yeah. But to get yes. back to, yes. yes. So, so if somebody gives you directions to some place, uh -huh. sometimes you think, I don't know if I'll find it. I don't know. I've never gone that way. And then you do it, and you, the ride back is always easier because you know where you're going. Right. And that's with, that's with change. You know, we just, we, uh, somebody... At a workshop that I was at, somebody said, everything in life is an improvisation. We, we don't, unless the words are written somewhere, unless you're reading a script, from the time we get up until the time we go to bed, we improvise. You know? That's you, true. You know, you don't think about that, right? Isn't that the neatest thing when yeah. you think about that? Just think, you know, we're improvising right now. We <laughs> well, don't have a script. Yeah, there's not a script. We don't have a script. <laughs> we're, just, we're just talking and we're making, you know, sense of, of, of weird things. And we hope it comes out right. We hope it comes out right. <laughs> but I think that's so important to remember is that nobody knows exactly how something is going to go. You don't know. You never know. And, but you always should try because if you don't try, you're never going to know. That's right. That is. It's that whole tried and true, isn't it? All it of is. a sudden, all those old things yeah. are coming back. Right? Yeah. Those all those things. sayings that, that we, we heard them, but they never made any sense, and now they make sense. Now they make sense. Yeah. So um, there's extras in the book, right? If somebody, if a parent or a mentor or a grandparent oh, yes, wants yes. to just start a conversation or talk about things, they can do that. And uh, where can people find your book? People can ask for my book at any library. Yep. Yes, that you be sure to ask. Yep. And uh, so that'll be good. Yeah. And uh, that's really cool.